Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie Vaughn here with How She Got Here, a podcast brought to you by Next Level. And today we are here with CEO and co-founder of No Doubt, Erica Carvel. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited to be here. And um, I love all things women, all things women entrepreneurs. So uh, really excited to share my story and just have a conversation. So thanks for inviting me. You're absolutely welcome. You know, we try to get women of all races and backgrounds and ethnic classes and, and social classes to come on and tell their stories so that hopefully we can inspire more women to get into the technology field. So mm-hmm. tell us, where did you grow up? I'm, I'm a Nashville native. I grew up in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. I call it my safe space. Love <laughs> living here. So. Well, I call you a unicorn then because so many of us are not from here. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm a, uh, it's, it's a rarity to come mm-hmm. across a native in Nashville yeah. now. So. Yeah, very much yeah. so. So tell me also, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? Oh, man, so many things. And I, I tell this story a lot. Um, I remember when I was nine years old, my dad asked me and my sister in the car ride home what we wanted to be uh, when we grow mm-hmm. up. And um, my sister just, she took it as a joke and she just kind of threw something out there. And then I just said, a single mother businesswoman. I have no idea why I said that at nine years old. Um, Both my parents, you know, were married for 28 years and never even knew what a single mother was. Right. Um, And then my dad was a pastor. Um, He worked, he was a a lineman for NES. He's an engineer for NES. So he was not an entrepreneur, didn't own a business. I don't know why that came out of my mouth, but that's what I ended up becoming. Um, It's so weird. But um, I wanted, it it changed a lot. Like I went from wanting to be a judge, from wanting to be a teacher, um, from a singer. Like I even had a group called Ashe. and uh, had, you know, had a song out. And so it just changed um, until I became a mother um, Mm -hmm. and I decided to go to college uh, and I got my uh, bachelor's in business, um, Mm -hmm. master's in organizational leadership. And I just said, okay, you know, I like this business thing. Let's, let's stick with that. And so I became a single mother businesswoman. (laughs) There you go. um, What college did you go to? Uh, so I went. I started out at TSU um, yeah. here. I did three years of undergrad there, and then uh, transferred to Cumberland University in Lebanon, mm-hmm. and graduated from Cumberland. Yeah. So tell us about those early career steps for you in the technology world. How did you start dipping your toes in that? I kind of just jumped in, mm-hmm. uh, head first. Um, I got the idea of Nodat from my son. Uh, in 2016, uh, right. late summer 2016, he was came crying to me about not being able to go to a water park that his friends were teasing him about on Snapchat. And he was upset that I didn't know about this water park. And um, when I called around and asked a, a lot of my family and friends about it, only one person knew that this water park existed in our community. Mm-hmm. And I told my son that someone needed to build an app that rewarded locals for sharing what they know and call it know that. And he said, why don't you do it, mama? And so I, I, at that time, I didn't know of a lot of, uh, you know, black people in tech, uh, let alone black women. And so I started thinking to myself, why not me? Mm-hmm. And um, so I just started doing research um, and kind of basically taught myself along the way um, on how to, you know, put together the scope of the project, how to hire uh, developers. So it wasn't, I did not go to school for uh, software engineering or anything like that. It was all, all self-talk and um, self-taught and trial and error. Yeah. That, well, we try to tell people all the time that technology is, is not just what we think of IT or software developers and those types of things. And there's all kinds of concepts that you mm-hmm. can work with in technology. Yeah. So, so- how did, um, like, what were the growing pains for um, NoDAP? There, there are a lot. Um, <laughs> there are a lot. Uh, one week, when we first launched in 2017, we our original con- concept was to launch with uh, video reviews. So kind of think like TikTok, but mm-hmm. for uh, small businesses. But at that time, people were not. Uh, you know, as comfortable seeing themselves on video. They they were right. still used to Facebook captions and 
um, written reviews. Even though we got a lot of traction early on, we were still too early. Mm -hmm. And so um, we tried to launch uh, nationally, like in every, we tried, we tried to launch in 15 cities oh, wow. the first time. And that was like the biggest mistake um, to make one because we had not proven out our concept which mm -hmm. I didn't know at that time. So we wasted a lot of money on marketing because um, even though we had like this cool idea, we had no idea, we, we were not solving a problem. It was just cool to have video reviews instead of written reviews. And so um, even though we acquired like 1400 businesses on the platform, over 30,000 uh, users, the, when we talk to the businesses more, uh, they, they basically say, hey, this is cool, but it's just another Yelp. And we don't want another Yelp. And, right. you know, this isn't solving our problem. And so more conversations with them, with the businesses, more conversations with the um, with our users led us to the to where we are today and mm -hmm. identifying that the, the biggest problem in local marketing is the fact of repeat revenue. Um, local businesses, 92% of them struggle to generate repeat revenue. And, like they spend a lot of money on getting new customers. But they don't they're they're not retaining them right and so uh yeah we we wasted a lot of money um just to figure that i wouldn't say I wasted a lot of money because it, it helped us get to where we are mm -hmm. but uh yeah that was one of our biggest mistakes so okay so biggest mistake was launching too big too fast so mm -hmm. what do you think was the greatest learning experience for you on a positive side for that uh how to uh get to product market fit um, and, and how to identify the problem that you're solving mm -hmm. and the uh, solution, you know, and um, articulating what that solution is. And, you know, being okay with not growing too fast. Mm -hmm. When, you know, when you are in tech, you see all these billion dollar exits and you're like, oh, it's so overnight. And you think that the person just had the right idea and right. they launched it and all of a sudden they had a billion dollar exit, but that's not so. And so I would say the biggest thing that I learned is that it is okay to grow as slow as you need to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and then knowing that your goal is to have, you know, solve a problem and not just make money, right? To, pro to provide value and really solve a problem. And mm -hmm. so we're okay with that because that's, that's our goal and, and we're going to do that. Yeah. So how many businesses are on there right now that will give back so explain explain the concept to me so you have people who use it and they get rewards for using the app is that what i understood so that's one concept so okay. um know that is the first all-in-one platform that helps a business not only just attract new customers but also mm -hmm. uh turn those customers into local influencers so okay. the best way that i can uh describe it for you is to give you like a use case okay. um from a from a user perspective, let's say um, you're traveling out of town and you want to know where you can get uh, barbecue from the best black owned barbecue uh, joints. You okay. love patronizing women owned businesses. Um, you may be LGBTQ and, and you want to know where the bars and nightlife is for LGBTQ. You basically build your own um, uh marketing avatar uh in nodat you're telling nodat who you are um and as you drive around uh nodat notifies you of the things that you only want to know about so you don't you know have to get frustrated with going to google search anymore and seeing the same 10 um uh, restaurants near me when you're looking for somewhere new um and and no more spam or irrelevancy mm -hmm. and then so from a business perspective um, the competition to get on the first page of Google is is really, really fierce, and it costs a lot of money. Most small businesses don't have that budget to compete with national chains, and so we've made it easier for them to connect with the right customer at the right time in the right service area so that they're not casting this wide net and hoping to catch, you know, the right size um, fish. And mm -hmm. so... Um, yesterday we met with one of our uh, pilot customers, which is a franchise. Uh, have you uh, pros nail pros nails twelve south? Okay. Um, and they, they so they ran their first campaign on there, and they were like, 
holy crap it's like we ran ads on next door that i think they pay like 230 dollars with next door uh to you know reach four zip codes and got no hits whatsoever um and they were running google ads and then they ran two campaigns with us and um their first time customers increased 56 percent from 78 to 138 first time customers and so we sent them 19 new walk-ins 19 new walk-ins just from two campaigns so they've decided to cut their google adwords in half it just you know being able to get and target the right people who say i i love to get my nails done i live um in this zip code so i and i want to patronize uh, pros to South is black owned. So it's like, I want to patronize a black owned nail salon. And so we target those people and say, hey, here's a black owned nail salon that's one mile away from you. And they have a deal on the app. You can get $10 off today. And that's how um, they attract um, new customers. I know that was wow. a long explanation. No, it was great, though. It was great because for somebody like me who doesn't understand all the technology stuff yet, I'm getting there. It's great to have it explained and broken down for you in a way that you can understand it because sometimes it gets intimidating to go, oh, it's technology. I don't understand all the backdoor things, you know, any of that kind of stuff. But telling me what it does for facing is great help. That's good, good. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the fun stuff, right? That's yeah. The- <laughs> so, how are you um, funding this now? Like, are you in seed rounds? Are you in Series A, Series B, working um, to get um, those type of funding done that you can launch this bigger? So, so far, um, it has been self-funded in um, family and friends and uh, angels and pitch competition. So, we've raised three hundred fifty-two thousand dollars so far, um, and we are testing the waters right now on WeFunder. Um, with a million dollar uh, seed raise. So this will be our first seed raise. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we closed a pre-seed round of $35,000 um, last year. So uh-huh. we're testing the waters uh-huh. uh, right now uh, on WeFunder to garner investor interest and community um, community investor interest with the million dollar um, seed round. I love that. So tell me, what is the best career advice you've ever had, ever been given? Uh, is to see the entire vision and then build backwards from that. That is uh, from one of my most beloved uh, advisors, um, Robert Jewell. Um, Robert Jewell is the CEO of a uh, loyalty company that does the loyalty programs for Macy's and Brooks Mm -hmm. Brothers and all of them. And he, he saw me at a, um, at a, a business shower that that I was having uh, when I first launched Know That, and he came and he um, walked up to me and said he loved what we were working on mm-hmm. and that he, you know, he wanted to be my advisor. Mm-hmm. And he said, I, I see your entire vision. And he said, you're trying to build the entire vision all at once. And he mm-hmm. said, the best way to do this is to see that vision and work backwards from it. Mm-hmm. And that has been the best advice. That's what got me to the point of saying it's okay to grow slow. Mm-hmm. Like, because you got to bake the cake, right? right? You have to have all, you got to go to the store, get the ingredients, mm-hmm. you know, and then put them in the bowl and then bake it. And that's, that's where we are. And I'm okay with that. So I love that analogy. You got to bake the cake because mm-hmm. you got to know the ingredients to go in the cake. So you do have to see the, what the cake's going to be before you actually start making the cake. Love that. Yes. And everybody's cake isn't the same, right? Everybody yeah. has different ingredients. Mm-hmm. The cakes all cook at different times. Uh, some cakes don't rise and you got to start back over. It's, that's mm-hmm. what entrepreneurship is. And yeah. I wish, you know, I wish everyone looked at it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but in tech, everybody is, everybody's cake is compared on the same level and it shouldn't be. So. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah. So how do you think we get more women in tech? I think that we're very underrepresented right now. How do we mm-hmm. inspire young women to go into STEM programs? One, we have to get more um, v- v- venture capitalists investing in women in tech. There are a lot of women VCs now who are investing in women. And uh, let me say that the women VCs are out funding the male VCs right now. 
because they're investing in women and those businesses are performing at a higher percent, 63 percent time, 63 times more return on on investment um, because they're investing in women. And so but there are not enough of women, uh, you know, who are funding. Um, and so if we incentivize those uh, investors who are males to invest in women entrepreneurs early on in their in their rounds when they're pre you know when they're precede um an early stage i think that would be one way um another way is explaining that tech is not all coding um there are a lot of creative jobs in tech that women would be great at uh we we're great at coding too um but you know uh, project management, product marketing, um, data analytics, um, cybersecurity, like just explaining the, the different uh, uh, the, the different jobs or um, aspects of the technology world. And then building a community, right? Like making sure that your city, wherever you live, has a safe space for women to go and to learn all of this stuff um about about technology and then making sure that you're communicating with your community why it's important to have this demographic of human beings in this um field because we're going to smart cities you need women to say wait a minute that algorithm is biased that that ai machine it's it's biased it's not picking up this feature you because we we see things that our counterparts don't necessarily think right. about right yeah. um so we have we need to be at the table mm -hmm. and um so making sure that you know the community is showing support making it easy to show support so that we're building pipelines of uh, you know women tech professionals mm -hmm. yeah that is great advice so as we wrap up our interview tell me what inspires you my children well, there are several things, but my children inspire me. Um, I, I say a lot that they let me borrow their faith because this is a hard journey, um, let alone, you know, being a woman in tech in a male dominated space. Marketing tech is a male dominated space. Being a black woman in that space, um, it is hard in there are times where I'm like, I left a hundred thousand dollar a year job, <laughs> and now look where look where I'm. Like, I can't believe I did this. And my kids will say, "Look how far you've come, mm -hmm. mom. You can't give up." Like they literally will let me borrow from their faith, mm -hmm. and because they believe in me so much, to the point to where two of them are entrepreneurs uh, now, um, really? where they're aiming to be. Yes, they're yeah. they're in their early 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 stages, but they said that. I've already shown them, mm -hmm. um, you know, what it takes. And so they inspire me. And then knowing that my, the bigger picture of what my goal is for the black community, mm -hmm. my goal for the black community is to remind, you know, the black community that we can do anything. Mm -hmm. um, we can dream big, mm -hmm. we can shoot for the stars. and. Yes, it may be hard. Yes, there may be obstacles that we have to uh, break through, but it's not impossible. Yeah. And so those two things inspire me to continue to keep going. Oh, that's so good. You almost made me crying there. <laughs> so tell me, can I get that on my phone now? Yes, it's available okay. now, uh, Android and iOS. And we are uh, developing a Chrome extension uh, okay. right now. So you'll be able to have it on Chrome too. Oh, exciting. All right, Erica, we cannot wait to see what happens next for you. And thank you for stopping by and being on How She Got There. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to see y'all at the event.